You're live on Joy News today. Let's move to other stories now. Now, Sheikh Ahmed Dalmuk Al Maktoum, the United Arab Emirates based agent in Ghana's botched attempt to procure Sputnik V vaccines, has finally refunded the sum of 2.47 million US dollars to the government of Ghana, representing the remaining amount for the non supplied doses of the vaccines. Sheikh Al Maktoum was due to supply about 300,000 Sputnik V vaccines in an agreement signed with the government, but his outfit delivered only 20,000. With this out of the way, the chairman of the parliamentary ad hoc committee that probed the matter, Alex Apeyomarkin, says there is nothing more to ask and the country must consider the matter closed. More from him shortly, but first, let's bring you more on what we know. And we have that letter from the Sheikh on your screen. It's titled Refund. Uh, as in a rejoinder to the refund to the government of Ghana of the balance of payment for 300,000 doses of Sputnik V vaccines. Dear Mr. Kwabna Buidu Okwafari, who is the chief director of the Ministry of Health, please reciprocate my best wishes to the Honorable Minister. We acknowledge your receipt of your letter and the reference is stated there regarding the refund or balance of payments to the government of Ghana for the supply of Sputnik V vaccines. Now, here's a big part. It says the requested amount of 2,470,000 United States dollars has already been refunded to the designated bank account as communicated by you. The swift and payment advice for the refund is hereby attached for your reference and record. We also confirm that no funds have ever been drawn under the letter of credit. Kindly notes the LC stands expired since June 2021 and is no longer a valid legal instrument issued in our favor. Kindly issue us a payment receipt once the funds have been credited to the government bank account. We look forward to working on future endeavors with your ministry and your government to further enhance the, the bilateral relationship between our two brotherly countries. Yours sincerely, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Dalmuk Al Maktoum, member of the ruling family of Dubai and at the United Arab Emirates. There's a second page which is an attachment that is basically the documents that shows proof that this has been done. And that's the swift advice placed there. Now, Deputy Majority Leader Alexander Apeyomarkin, who chaired the committee that probed the deal, confirms receipt of the money and says there is nothing more to demand of Health Minister Kweku Ajmaimenu. Let me confirm on good authority that indeed, uh, the payment has been made, the refund has been made. To me, the major concern of Ghanaians in all of these was possible financial loss to the state. The minister, like I said in my debate, was sincere and candid in everything he did. Information flow to us, written evidence to us, and all of that. This goes to confirm that the minister did not lie when he said at all material times he knew he was dealing with a credible entity. Mm. And this flows from, one, the letter they wrote saying that they could not supply the rest and the fact that they were willing to refund the unsupplied doses. Today, by the grace of God, the funds have fully landed in the account of government of banks. People have had all the twists to this whole thing. The minister has been at the receiving end because even statement of fact that he made for some convenient people decided to twist it. But this is public service. This is politics. But he's been firm and been consistent in everything regarding this whole situation. And today, we have the funds back. If you ask me whether or not the committee would have any further action to take, I would say no, because in our recommendation, we stated that he should take, the, mini, the Ministry of Finance should take, should take steps to seek refund of the difference. But the Ministry of Health, rather, consistent with its earlier response to her, has been proactive in ensuring that it is done. And today, it closes the matter. 
Let's go on Zoom now and speak to anti-corruption campaigner of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption, Edem Senanu. Mr. Senanu, we are very grateful that you've joined us. So what do you make of these comments by the chairman of the ad hoc committee that probed this matter, Alex Apeño Markin? He says that this payment should put the matter to rest. Well, thank you for having me. Um, respectfully and seriously, it does not. The fact that he indicates that one of the concerns of a majority of Ghanaians was whether we're going to lose some more money, that's true. But beyond that, there is the issue of the breaches of our laws that occurred and how come without the necessary approvals, this payment was made in the first place. There are process issues that suggest that other contracts could have also gone through, um, gone under the radar without us noticing them and payments made that we ought to be taking into consideration. And so the matter does not rest simply mm. because uh, the Sheikh has returned the money. The question is, how did we get that far without the international agreement being approved by parliament, without the public procurement authority approval, without 50% of the consignment having been brought to, to, to the shores of this country? Um, how come it is suggested that all effort was made to get a direct source when the embassy here claims that there was no attempt to contact them. So there are more questions than answers at the moment, and we need to make sure that we dig much deeper, get answers to prevent a future reoccurrence. I am surprised that in the parliamentary report, the fact of the breaches by their colleague was not taken into consideration in making a specific recommendation. Mm. And that is a gap or a deficit that parliament must understand that the people of this country We'll be taking a good look at them because all of us really don't understand how come there was no specific recommendation relating to that breach. What sort of recommendation would you have expected in terms of the, the breaches of law? Well, um, one would have need to take a look at the standing orders of parliament and find out uh, for an honorable member who is supposed to, as it were, uh, be law abiding and yet fail to do so under these circumstances. Is there a need to refer him to the, um, the relevant committee that would look at um, his performance and how it affects the integrity and the image of parliament? Uh, because I think that breaching our law is something that if it were an ordinary citizen, <laughs> we would not be talking about this as if it was just a casual issue. Right. Uh, but, but here we are, and um, it seems like people are trying to brush it under the carpet right. when other citizens will not have been treated right. so casually. Now, uh, you made an interesting suggestion that the, the manner in which there were breaches of law in this particular contract could suggest that, yes, there are other contracts which have seen similar breaches. This view is shared by many, especially when it comes to the COVID procurements, the procurements around COVID-19. Would you suggest that perhaps um, some of these other contracts are probed by, you know, a relevant body like Yoko Shraj or even the special prosecutor um, so that we established if there were indeed breaches of law such as the, the, the Sputnik V deal? So, actually, Daniel, uh, this particular incident provides a compelling justification why the special prosecutor should take on board all the contracts that have been signed within the space uh, uh, of the pandemic from March 2020 to date and take a clinical look at what transpired in those contracts. Did we get value for money? Were processes followed? Was the law breached? Did any individuals benefit from um, a lack thereof of adherence to the laws and the policies that we have in place? I think that there's no doubt in my mind that we need to take a good look at it. And we need to understand why our system failed in this instance. Because if we don't plug those holes, um, this issue of we don't have money in the kitty, and therefore we must uh, find you know, increased taxes, you have labor complaining, and so on and so forth, we'll continue going through this cycle. We need to make sure we are doing judicious use 
of the resources we have. I think it's imperative at this stage that some further investigation, in my view, by the special prosecutor, to look at what has transpired over the period is, ne is needed. Thank you very much, Adam Fernando, for joining us. He is with the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. He's an anti-corruption campaigner.